Greetings all. This is Harry Nick. And this is a less Harry Justin. Okay, we are trying something a little bit different today. Welcome to our Discord channel. We're going to be having a look at some of these new rules that just dropped into the game of X-Wing. Uh, was it today or yesterday? Was it with the points change? I don't know. I woke up one day and all the rules uh, changed. Yeah, like all of a sudden just bam. Things. Indeed. Sorry, not changed. It's more that we've had stuff added in. Um, it looks like FFG are actually preemptively putting some changes in now for future releases, uh, which is cool. They're avoiding like another approval process with Disney or something like that. I don't, don't know. know. Yeah, They've cool. added some jokes in there as well. It's quite nice. Yes, I like jokes. Jokes are always <laughs> good. Uh, so yes, here on our Discord channel, we've just got an image dump of all the latest stuff on a nice lock channel so we have a nice clean feed of all these new images. So what we've done, or rather what our patron JJ has done, has cropped out all the um, new rules in the rules document and posted them here for us, which is very nice. Thank you very much for that, JJ. So without any further ado, let's go through them. Oh, one more thing. I'm also recording this a little bit differently. Um, I'm sort of using everything live on OBS. I apologize. I know the curse is still over my face. I just can't find a way to get rid of it. I am, I've been fighting with this the last few videos. Um, but also, it's recording this picture-in-picture -picture thing, like all done live. So if my old graphics card tends to sort of slow down in some of the video, you know why. I do have a new one coming, uh, which will be very exciting. I tend to make a video on that when that happens. So let's have a look at these new rules for Allied. So, some of the ship's devices controlled by the same player are allied to each other instead of being friendly. Allied ships are used by their player, I think it means used, mm. much like friendly ships but do not interact with effects uh, friendly ships. Ships cannot perform attacks against allied ships, obviously. A ship mm -hmm. is not friendly to its allied ships and abilities uh, that affect friendly ships do not affect allied ships. If a ship is not allied with itself, uh, and so abilities that affect allied ships do not affect uh, that ship that produces them. Okay, uh, this is so, weird. I think basically it's saying that allied ships, while they're with your team, they're not getting the friendly bonuses. Indeed, um, even devices as well. So this is this is a weird one. Um, I'm trying to think what's going to happen here with this. Are they like hinting at uh, like tenuous alliances like oh. Ketsu Onyo on the Rebellion or um, uh, the dude that stutters from The Last Jedi with the FO? <laughs> Forgot his name. Uh, DJ, that's right, DJ. Oh, yeah. Um, yeah, I mean, it's not something that we... We don't know what this is yet. But again, this is like a placeholder for a future thing. Mm. Curious about that. Very curious about that. Uh, maybe... I don't think they're going to do the thing with Epic where they let Scum go on different factions because that's what they used to do back before Scum got any Epic ships. That's uh, right, they did too. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> Very curious. So we're going to have like a, a different levels of friendliness within your ships on your squad. Could be interesting. Let's move yeah. over to Chewbacca on the Resistance. Chewbacca, Resistance, setup, lose one charge. This ability occurs after the ship equipped with Chewbacca is placed during uh, step five, which happens before explosion with wings uh, on the fireball happens. So, in other words, you can't use Chewbacca to repair that card. That's all it's saying. Does that make sense? Yep. Yep, pretty straightforward. Uh, by the way, these are FAQs and rules, by the way. Um, they're all mixed up in alphabetical order, so in case I'm jumping around, I apologize for that. Now, uh, closest valid attack range on automated targeting priority. Uh, this is pretty much what we came to expect. Uh, basically, if anything's in range one, you must pick a ship in range one. If nothing's in range one and you have multiple ships in range two, you must pick one of the ships in range two. Uh, you don't pick the ship that's physically closer so long as they're within the same range you can choose between them <laughs> and also um this is actually a point that you brought up in that video with the tie sf um specifically with concussion missiles 
Uh, what you do, in the case of you having weapons with multiple attack ranges, like the TIE SF um, has the primary at range 1 to 3, or concussion missiles in the example that FFG have given us, at 2 to 3, first you measure everything, and then you can say, oh, I've got something at range 1 and range 2, but I'm going to pick concussion missiles so I don't uh, shoot that thing at range 1. You can, uh, you can strategically choose your weapon to limit uh, the limitations. It's not very good hmm. English, I realize, um, on this card. Uh, which makes perfect sense, and I think that's really cool. Yeah. Yeah, I'm glad that they've put that in, and it just irons out any problems that anyone's ever going to have. That's right. Um, there's ways to sort of work around the limitations, but not in any kind of egregious way. Hmm. Um, and they actually use the specific example that you come up with in the video when we <laughs> reveal it, so... That's good. That's good. Obviously, they're listening to us. That's it. It's got to be it. Um, actually, i got to say, most of the things that we said, hey, this needs an FAQ, are coming up. <laughs> Maybe they are listening to us. Say hi in the comments, FFG. Um, <laughs> what do we got here? Uh, some coordinating rules. A ship that coordinates without performing an action may choose a friendly, allied, or enemy ships. Uh, cool. The reason this has been brought up is because Hondo Anaka, uh, which is actually the next point I'll bring up right here. Mm. Uh so basically, if you're doing a coordinate action, as stated in the rules, it must be a friendly ship. But if there's anything else that lets you coordinate, like Hondo, for example, uh, where you're not doing coordinate action, you're just coordinating, yes, you can coordinate enemy ship. Now, the interesting thing about this, Justin, is this is true of any other effect that lets you coordinate out of turn. Now, I don't think there is any other card that lets you coordinate as a non-action I'm sure someone in the comments will point it out if I've forgotten something here yeah. uh, I can't think of anything off the top of my head but I don't know yeah. why you'd ever want to do that but I suppose it is conceivably it's conceivably beneficial in some weird situation where you want your opponent to have to do something it's very unlikely like, I'm talking like a fraction of percent of the time that is something that you'd ever want to do. Yeah, I don't think that's ever going to be a thing, but hey, hmm. that's a thing. But basically, yeah, Hondo can coordinate enemy ships. Uh, it works. That's, that's all this is saying. <laughs> okay, new upgrade type, hyperdrive. So this is for the ETA 2 hyperdrive ring. Um, yeah, when I first saw this, I thought it was going to be... Um, oh, they're going to add an upgrade on to all ships with hyperdrive. Like, oh, no, it's that thing that they already showed. Yeah. Oh, so, sorry to burst your bubble there. I, I wanted new upgrade type on, like, the Falcon and all that kind of stuff. Well, I mean, maybe eventually they might start putting them on. Yeah, but... possibly. Like, um, like, the idea is you can add stuff onto it. But, like, that ETA 2 card, is that just an ETA 2? It, it must be. Uh, it also goes on the V-Wing. Yes. Oh, and it says so on the upgrade card. Okay, it probably isn't a fun new upgrade type, sad face, but it might be one day. <laughs> Linked actions. So this is weird. This was a bit of a mind bender when I first read it, but basically it essentially says you've got to pick the action you're linking into before you resolve all the effects of the first action does that make sense justin okay so like if you're going to do a focus barrel roll you've got to say i'm going to do a barrel roll if there could conceivably be another effect so after the ship performs an action oh. with an attached link action if the player wants to resolve the linked action it adds it to the ability queue if it has multiple linked from the same starting uh, point like focus to barrel roll or focus to boost mm. you can choose only one linked action to add into the queue so no sorry you don't choose it as you're doing the first action but when mm. you're doing the second action where, as in when you've queued it up you've got to choose it as it goes into the queue now again this is really really niche but we're talking about effects that react to other effects um, now I think I think I think I think one of the big things, the big interactions coming up, and I might be wrong about this. Mm -hmm. I'll pop the images up on the screen. Uh, the new Poe can allow you 
to use linked actions and there are cards on the resistance that allow you to do things oh. like boost or barrel roll when you're stressed. So that ship could theoretically do three actions. Right. And that's where you have a situation where a, an effect goes onto the queue yeah. as a pose action is being resolved. So you do your first action, you then provide a second action using pose ability, but you're still... And as you resolve that, you still have the option to link the next action after that. Yeah, okay. Yeah, does that make sense? Uh, yeah. <laughs> okay, so cool. You, yeah, you you're, can go you're linking two actions, but Poe is giving you a second action in between them because that is a response to the first action. Yeah. Okay, <sighs> okay cool. That's a thing that could happen, theoretically. Yeah. Um, I think that's what's going on here anyway. It'll make sense when we have actual real-world examples to actually you know, sort of show off. Mm. Okay, moving right along. How are abilities that may choose a ship e.g. K2SO or Darth Vader, resolved when they are reached in the ability queue. So, uh, this is interesting. This is about, do you have to do it before it enters the queue or as it resolves? And I believe the gist of this paragraph is you choose the ship as it's resolving. When uh, an ability that may choose a ship is reached in the ability queue before paying costs, the ship may measure range any number of ships, then they choose, and then they can choose not to do it. Okay. So yeah, you don't choose a ship as it enters the queue. So again, the ability queue comes up so rarely in this game, but if you have anything else that's triggering at the same time, you don't have to choose a ship. And if that ship blows up because of another effect, you don't lose the ability to do it. Mm. Yeah. Okay. Um, yep. I, I, I don't know about you people watching, but me and Justin play Magic the Gathering, so we know all about this kind of stuff. It's yeah, like it's you, sort of you, just second nature to us. We but like yeah. people like it just goes onto the stack. I go, yep, it goes on onto the stack. It's done in reverse to MTG, but functionally it works the same way. Like yeah. you bolt something, and then you make that creature fight something in response. So as that resolves, the creature is still there, but it dies as the next thing enters the stack. It's just so weird. Hmm. Um, it's really, really niche. But essentially, if you're going to pick something. Only as that ability resolves do you choose um, the target for K2SO or Vader or whatever card says you must choose something at range, whatever. Hmm. A bit of a mind bend, I know, but hopefully that makes sense. Hopefully, once we have real world examples, the people out there who are confused uh, goes, oh, that's what those hairy idiots were talking about <laughs> on YouTube. Uh, negative recurring charges. Uh, end phase, you lose one instead of getting one. Yep, yeah, don't need to talk about that. Makes perfect yeah. sense. Uh, charges associated with a ship's limit that have a recurring charge symbol are called a recurring charge. Alternatively, charges... Hey, hey, I kept I kept calling them and people keep saying, no, it's not what recurring means, Nick. Ha, FFG agrees with me. Alternatively, the charges uh, associated with charge limits do not have a uh, recurring charge symbol are called non-recurring charges. Yep, so, uh, something, yeah. so like the new R2-D2 has non-recurring charges. Yeah, yeah, good point. Good point. Yeah. Um, and that just added on the little bit of uh, negative recurring charges, which is the ones that go down. So makes perfect sense. Yeah. Okay, rotating a ship. Uh, there's not really much to say here. Basically, you use that little right angle tool, which you got in the second edition pack, and you pop it onto the corner of a ship and you rotate it 90 or 180. Uh, this is relevant... Uh, with the new A wing, do the U wing still rotate? I know they did in first yes. edition. They do they still, do. yeah, they do still rotate. That's right, yeah. Uh, it doesn't count as moving, uh, which is good. So if you're on a rock, you don't roll again for the rock if you rotate on it. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Apart from and, that, all the same. And if you're rotating and you would bump something it, because it's a medium base, because medium bases aren't actually square, you can't do it. Are they not square? No, they're slightly oh, off. No wonder they fit everywhere. Okay, yeah. let's get going. Uh, limited condition. Now, this is basically an extension of what we saw uh, previously. If an effect assigned an instance of a limited condition to the extended uh, in excess of the limited value of that condition, that player whose effect caused the condition to be assigned chooses the instant that stays. Uh, so... For example, I'll show you the dark side. You put it on a ship. 
you can then show another ship the dark side, but only one of them stays in play. That Pretty makes simple. sense. Yeah. And you, you as the player can go, okay, I'll show this ship the dark side and I'll discard it off that other one or I'll keep it on that other one. You get to choose as the player. Hmm. Secret conditions. Ooh. Yeah. Mm. Secret. Secret. That's it. <laughs> um, yeah. yeah. So... What were these dot points? No ship can have more than one secret condition that shares the same condition marker. If a ship is assigned a secret condition that uh, uses a smaller condition marker as a condition it already has. Uh, yes. Secret condition has a previous condition is removed. Oh, okay. So the player who affects assign the secret condition may look at the face down card. Of course, the identi- yeah. identity of the assigned secret condition as well as an unassigned secret condition that share the same symbol are hidden. A text secret condition is open information and can be accessed by either player at any time. Okay. I think what this means, Justin, is there's going to be an upgrade or pilot coming out soon that says, hey, pick one of these conditions and assign it to an opponent's ship. Ah, uh, but it has the I'm, same I'm just, marker. So I'm just sitting there going, all these secret conditions. I don't know of any card right now that has a secret no, condition. No, there, there is no secret condition yet. Okay, um, good. It's going to be like, oh, a super secret spy, and and you flip it face up like as a trap. It's yeah. It's it's, it's Yu-Gi-Oh. I it's activated Yu-Gi- your trap card, Yugi boy. <laughs> Yugi boy. That's it. <laughs> That's the one. Uh, um, so what it's saying is the player that assigned it can always look at it and go, oh, yeah, that's the one I gave you. And the text that's on it is always accessible to all players. Obviously, your opponent can't just pick it up and look at it, but they can, like, open up a squad builder and check what all the conditions do at any point. It's open information. Yeah, that, just like any sense. other game piece. Uh, the reason they have to clarify that is because this is the only game piece right now that has to be secret but you mm. can look at what it could potentially be. Um, just like, op- you can open up a rule book and have a look at what that card is, so long as yeah. you don't know specifically which one it is. Weird, yeah, so I know, like, it, like if it's, if it's going to be like a damage card, like it says you can only pick pilot damage cards or something like that, you could be like, oh, okay, yeah. I know it's going to be pilot cards, therefore it's going to be one of these. It can't be a ship card. Yeah, for yeah. example, that could be a thing that you do, yeah. So okay. it's it's open information, just not open that so much that you know exactly what it is. And the next card, a very important card for the hairy gamers. Yep, the sensor boy. Yep. That's it. Three agility, two hull. Yep, cool. one's yep. red, one's blue. Indeed. Very, very cool. I, I like I like the design of this. Yeah. Speaking of before. So this is an upgrade card that comes with the G shuttle. So next up, we have some info on side slips. Now I've got both of these here. Let's do this one first. Um, a side slip is an advanced maneuver that you turn or bank using the side of the template, as yes. shown. Makes perfect sense. Now you've just got to remember that when it it says left, that you actually put it on the right hand side of the card, oh, right hand side of the ship. On the so you right hand side of the so ship. so ah. what you do what what you do is you uh, as they said on Gold Squadron you lean back and you work out where it's meant to be going normally and you put it that way lean oh, back okay uh, right for a right side slip place it on the left side of the ship now 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 does that mean it can't do the opposite side slip no of course it can do the opposite side slip it's it, just it that can- if you, if you choose the left, you've got to put the template on the right-hand side of the ship. If you choose right, it goes on the left-hand side. But you can't do a left on the left, is what I'm saying. No, no, because the left goes on the right. Okay. So, okay, if if you, if, sorry, if everyone dial, is seeing me understand this live. So, yeah. <laughs> um, uh, no, so no, what I'm you saying is, you see, you see the little image where it's um, it's got the cross next to it. Is yeah. that completely illegal? You can't do that. Yeah, because you, uh, you're you're side slipping to the front. You don't side slip backwards. Oh, you can't. No, oh, I thought you could. Okay, there's always something that slips my mind whenever I look at these videos. Um, yeah, okay, fair enough. Hmm. I assume that you'd be able to do either from either side, but that's okay. In other words, you're always moving forwards. Like yes. This. Okay. Yeah. Cool. 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 Um, that's probably a good thing. 
It means that the side slip is always predetermined and you cannot choose something different when you come to activate. That's probably a good thing. Yeah. That's probably a good thing. I'm happy with that. Um, the reason being, like, if you choose, like, a left bank, you can't then go, oh, I could go here or I could go here. Yeah, it, yeah. it's not like uh, Echo with in terms of when they decloak and you've got literally all the choices in the world. Yeah, it, it, yeah. This that's, is, no, that's fine. you do it this way. Yep, I dig it, I dig it. Okay, cool. <clears throat> I'm actually very happy with that. I think it's probably like the more balanced approach. Cool, yeah. so you're always sidestepping forward, which I guess in terms of how the ship functions kind of makes sense. I still yeah, think it's uh, really, really powerful. Like, I'm not saying this is a bad manoeuvre. No, uh, I, I think that if it was actually doing it backwards, like that sort of, it, it doesn't make sense on how a ship flies. It's literally... Yeah, like I was like, thinking, it's a repulsor ship. It can sort of do like on the spot maneuvers like that. But I think like they're trying to represent it always having forward momentum, like most other ships. So yeah, yeah. I'm cool with this. Very happy with that. Okay, standardized. So this is going to be a keyword that goes into some upgrades that basically say this must go on the ship. Uh, this is a built-in upgrade. We just couldn't fit all the text on the ship. <clears throat> I think Justin that standardize is going to be errated onto all the S-foils. Every S-foil? Yeah, sure. Even B-wings? Not the one that costs points. So not, yeah. not B-wing S-foils and not vulture struts, yep. uh, but like the X-wings, they're going to have to have S-foils, uh, especially considering uh, there's now cards that refer to them separately. Yeah. So, does that make sense? Yeah, yeah, that makes sense. Yeah. So you can't accidentally not take them. I mean, why wouldn't you? They, they cost zero. Yeah. But sometimes, sometimes. So, uh, sometimes people are like, no, I don't feel like it. I don't, I don't know why. And I actually quite like, like this from a design point of view because it means when you're assessing a ship and it has a standardized upgrade, it just makes sure that you know, oh, when you're, when you're like evaluating how it works, the points, its values, its stats, all that kind of stuff, that's all part of the package when you have standardized upgrades. Now, we already pretty much do that with X-Wings. Like, oh yeah, it costs this many points because it has those stats and it has the S-Foils. It's all part of mm. the package. But now there's a keyword just to make sure that we don't forget. Cool. Okay, a stress maneuver. So this is now what we refer to as the illegal maneuver that you try to do when you're stressed. Uh, essentially... It doesn't change any of the current rules, but it now actually has a keyword referring to it. If you try to do a stressful maneuver or a red maneuver when you're already stressed, you do a white two forward. This is how the rules always been. Yeah. Um, also, they've clarified the same is now true for force. If you try to do a purple maneuver when you have no force, you do a white two forward. It's still called a stressful maneuver, or rather a stress maneuver. Um, that's weird because I don't know if there's any way in the game to accidentally... Well, there are ways to accidentally do it. Um, yeah. There are upgrades that can make you spend force. But I don't know if there's any way that your opponent can maliciously take your force up uh, token. No, but uh, like it's just more the thing of... You, you've put in a purple maneuver. For some reason, you've spent your force somehow. It, it's, yeah. just, uh, it's just a way to keep the game fair, basically. That's right. You can't intentionally balk it and then complain to a judge that I should still be able to do it. <laughs> mm. Good. Yeah. Um, yeah. FFG is covering their bases. I like that. Um, yeah. Interestingly, like it says, oh, this is a special type of thing that we can refer to. I don't know why they ever would. It's not something that like, you don't do stress maneuvers as a mechanic. It's just in the rules to stop people from trying to do dodgy things. Yeah. Uh, but, there are ways to refer to it now, so who knows? Who knows? Now, it, it says here at the at the end of that, the bearing difficulty and speed cannot be changed unless an ability expi explicitly affects the stress maneuver, which is theoretically possible. Oh, oh. But what it's saying oh, okay. is like um like a uh, like the astromech that reduces the difficulty of your speed two maneuvers doesn't touch this. Oh, it, okay. It is always white. It is always white. Yeah. They're not going to errata okay. it to say stressful maneuvers. It's not going to. That's not going to happen. Okay, yeah, I, I was just thinking like, is there something where like all of a sudden you could do a two bank instead? I'm just like, how would you do that? But anyway, no, it's probably just getting ahead of it just in case. 
That's it. Okay, Marge Sable. What is the structure as mentioned on Mars Sable? Okay, we don't know what structures are. We don't know what Mars Sable is. So cool. Wait, wait, wait until this... the Tri Fighter article Actually, comes out, and we'll know then. The Mars Sable was a maneuver used in space battles, first developed uh-huh. by Jedi Commander Ahsoka Tano. Ah, see, <coughs> I knew it was something dumb. I thought we were getting like Mandalorian spoilers or something like that. <laughs> it would have been really uh-huh. cool. Nah, there's no way Disney would have let him do that. (laughs) Nah. Um, Okay. Fun. Fun times had by all. Thermal detonators. Back in X-Wing. Woo! Okay, so. Similar to uh, seismic charges. Everything at range 0 to 1. Rolls an attack die and uh, each ship gains one strain token for each eyeball result. And each ship gains uh, or remote suffers one hit or crit for each of the matching results. Cool. Yep. Sounds good. So a seismic uh, charge coming... guarantees one point of damage. This you, you roll for stuff. Yeah. And this is coming out with the um, Slave 1. No problem with that coming back into the game. Do like it. If an effect refers to your token, under which circumstance is a lock considered your token or not? Oh boy. <laughs> for effects that refer to your token, the lock is always the red token of the ship to which it has been assigned. For example, if ship A requires a lock on ship B, the lock is ship B's red token. It's not ship A's red token. Any effect that refers to your token from ship A does not refer to the lock. Any effect that refers to your tokens uh, from ship B refers to the lock. Oh boy. Okay. So, yeah, it's not yours. It's your opponent's token. Uh, okay, but... Oh, yeah, because you give out a lock token. You don't That's actually right. gain one yourself. Yeah, Indeed. okay, cool, yeah. Indeed, indeed, that is it. Okay, um, that's a very long way of saying that, but that's cool. Okay, last thing we have. It didn't migrate into the channel properly. Oh. That's right, we're learning. We're learning how to do these kind of videos. <laughs> uh, this is big. When a ship spends a charge, that charge is lost. Highlighted. So... That's it, Justin. That's the answer we wanted. Quick draw does work with inertial dampness. And that's literally all we needed. Like That's it. But once it something says that, you're like, okay, it means that it either does happen or it doesn't. We all now know tournaments can go on. That's right. No ratter on quick draw needed. When you Mm. spend something, you lose something. Um and I remember when this happened, like there was distinction in the rules. But my argument was like, oh, it's a quirk of the English language. Like, if yeah. you are, if if you don't have something that you had, you've lost it. That's that's how English works. <laughs> um, uh, and people were arguing like, oh no, it just specifically means you have, you have been deprived of it by an outside source. Which I'm like, no, that's not what losing means. Mm. It doesn't matter. All arguments aside, here it is, black and white. You can use quick draw with inertial dampeners, and I gotta say. I think this is going to be legit. You do? Question mark. <laughs> I mean, it might. I don't know. Time you will need, tell. You need a separate source um, with Agent Terex or whatever his name is. Um, so you need like a G or an Upsilon or something like that, mm. which is good because then like you can coordinate quick draw as well. So there could be like an ace, like a palp aces style list. On the FO, yeah. obviously, without palp, although maybe they'll get palp eventually. Ooh, who knows? Mm. Um, yeah. And, but bottom line is, yes, its interaction works, and we already have a precedent for how good inertial dampeners is at Initiative 6. We've seen it work on Fat Han um, earlier in the meta of 2nd Edition, and I think this is pretty legit. I think FFG may have to be... Or rather, we may have to watch out for this kind of stuff in meta play. It, 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 yeah. The effect seems really powerful. I know you might think it's really niche, but because you're activating Initiative 6, it seems like it's perfectly manufacturable. Um, yeah. Yeah, that's where I stand here. I think this is going to yeah. see a lot you of play. Can, you can yeah, set it, things up so that you do it before... Yeah. Okay. Mm. It, yeah. It, it's going to be good, but... Basically, yeah. Initiative 6... You wait till you activate. Oh, nobody flew into my arc. I'm not going to activate this round. Oh, somebody flew into my arc. Well, pop inertial dampeners, you're hitting shot. Yeah. It's an extra shot. It just 
seems pretty good. Yeah, not only is it an extra shot, but like, because you've stayed in that same position, you're going to get a shot on them as well. Mm. For the oh, normal absolutely. shot, so, yeah. Indeed, indeed. Oh, unless they're also initiative six and flying after you, but that's very, it's not likely. You're not going to no. build a list like this and then not take a big bid. Yeah. Um, so that's really cool and potentially really game breaking. Awesome. <laughs> um, in any case, yeah, that's all the new rule stuff that we've um, had to have a look at today. And yeah, lots of new stuff, lots of clarifications, lots of things to look forward to. Um, I like my minor spoilers in the rule book. That's kind of fun. Good work, FFG. Yeah. I dig it. I dig it. Um, in any case, stay tuned. We still have all the new points to go through. So that will be the next video we put out, hopefully soon after this one. In the meantime, like, subscribe, comment, do all the stuff that makes the YouTube algorithm super happy with me and Justin so we get recommended to more people and the channel grows. Speaking of which, 8K subs. We just hit that. Um, yeah. Tell a friend. Get everyone involved. Let's get to 10 as soon as possible. Let's let's make that well, nice let's, round let's, number happen. Then to I'm add add another get digit. So that we can then start making memes. Yes, memes. All the memes. All, Don't all let the your memes. memes be dreams. In any case, if you'd like to join our Patreon for the channel as well, another great way you can help support us. Information for that is down in the description. And thank you to all the patrons out there who already support us. Greatly appreciated. Me and Justin will catch you all in the next video. Bye.